Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. Those of you that use Lightroom probably know that recently Lightroom has been upgraded. And the product that we, for a couple years now, have called Lightroom CC is now called Lightroom Classic CC. And in this video, I'm going to go over a couple of the new features in that Classic CC. But before I do that, I just want to mention what Adobe did is they've actually created a new product. It's a cloud-based photo service, and they've called that Lightroom CC. Now, that's not to be confused with the Lightroom CC that we used last week. That is now called Lightroom Classic CC. So I'm not sure why Adobe decided to make this rather confusing. I would have preferred that they give that new product, that cloud-based photo service, an entirely different name, maybe Lightroom Cloud or something like that. But instead, they decided to call that Lightroom CC. And the product that we've now used the last couple of years is now called Lightroom Classic CC. Now, those of you that use Lightroom 6, I don't know what's going on. I don't work for Adobe, but I think you guys might be out in the cold. And I think that really stinks. So. Uh, for this video, we're going to talk about those changes in Lightroom Classic CC, and this really won't apply to anyone that is using Lightroom 6, unfortunately. Now, with Lightroom Classic CC, they, of course, you know, as, as far as upgrades are concerned, they have new camera support, lens support, stuff like that. That's always involved. But I guess the main thing that has happened to this new product, this Classic CC, is they've made it faster. And I have noticed that it is considerably faster, particularly when you, get, let's say, switch from develop to library or library to develop module. Sometimes that used to take quite a while. Now it's very, very fast. Also, if you just you know, use your arrow keys to go through your images, no matter what module you're in, it now goes considerably faster. So that's a welcome improvement because many of us have complained for the last couple of years that the speed of Lightroom was really lacking, particularly compared to some other competitors out there. Uh, Lightroom was just slow and clunky. Now it's much faster, so that's good. The other thing is they added a couple different masking options into Lightroom, and I'm going to go over those in this video. In a future video, I'll cover the Lightroom in the cloud, which is now called Lightroom CC, and I'll cover that and how you would work with that and things like that. And I've been getting a lot of requests to cover Lightroom Mobile, and I'll be doing that in future videos as well. But again, for this video, we're going to concentrate just on this now new program, which is still the old program, but they now call it Lightroom Classic CC. And specifically, they have a couple new masking options. And the masking options work whether you're using the graduated filter, the radial filter, or the brush. Now for this image, I'm going to demonstrate it using the radial filter. Now for this image, I actually like the image the way it is, but let's, for the sake of argument, say I wanted to make it more moody and I wanted to kind of light up the gorilla's face and have everything else relatively dark. Well, I could come in here in the basic panel and I could just pull exposure down considerably. All right, I might come back and readjust that, but we're going to pull that down. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get our radial filter. And with our radial filter, we're going to take exposure. We're going to pull that up and I'm going to make sure that this invert checkbox is checked so that I'm actually adjusting the inside of the radial filter so that when I draw my radial filter, as you could see, I'm actually putting kind of a spotlight on the gorilla's face. So we'll put that up a little more, make it a little wider like this even, and maybe even a little further out like that. So we have our gorilla's face uh, lit up. Now, it also lit up, as you can see, behind the gorilla. Well, what if I want to darken that? That's where these new masking features come in. And if you look in the radial filter, way down here at the bottom, there's a new part. It says range mask. And right now it's off. And you can see that there's two different choices, color and luminance. For this image, I'm going to do the color mask. 
And when you do that, you could see that we have a dropper and we have a slider. And there's some instructions down here you could read that will give you an idea. And the idea is you would take the dropper and you would click on the color that you want the mask to affect. Anything that isn't really that color will get the mask removed from it so it won't be affected. So if I want to just do this uh, gorilla's face, let's say I'll click once. And you can see it really didn't do a good job. Well, if you click again, it will move the mask or move the sample to a different location. So you could try moving the sample around to a different location. Another thing you could do is you could add to the sample. And to do that, hold the shift key in. And when you could see, when you hold that shift key in, the cursor has a little plus sign added to it. So we're going to be adding to the selection. So I could just keep clicking around and adding to the selection. Now, you see that really didn't do such a great job either. Well, there's a third option you could do. What you could do is you could just draw with this. So I have the, um, the eyedropper, and I would just say I want to draw, and it's going to sample that entire area. And you could see that did a much better job, and it kind of dimmed out over here. And if I want to try a different area, you could try there. And you could see it, it tends to change what is and isn't being affected. So I kind of have this spotlight on the gorilla's face. Now this amount slider will make it more, I guess, feathered if it's to the right. So you could see that the background is getting a little bit brighter when I move it to the right. And if I move it to the left, I could kind of restrict it and get it more just on the gorilla's face. Now I got to be careful because it's getting a little bit of a halo around here and I don't really like that. So I could bring it up a little bit. I could again just take different samples and try it all different ways and see which I think might work best for this specific image. So something like that. So that is the color range mask that is in this new Lightroom Classic CC. The other mask, I'm going to use this image here. And in this image, I'll use a graduated filter. And you probably know that if you use a graduated filter, it's right here. And in this case, you I want to darken the sky, so I'm going to bring exposure down, and I'm just going to pull my graduated filter down. Now, in doing that, you could see it darken the buildings considerably. Well, I don't want to darken those buildings. I just want to darken the sky, so I'm going to go and get a luminance range mask. And you could see that now we have two controls. One is a range broken slider, that's called. See, it has two halves to it. Right now, it's accepting or it's looking at the entire range. Think of this as a tonal range from black at the absolute left to white at the absolute right. Now obviously I don't want to move this right slider and restrict my lighter colors or lighter tones because when I do that it's doing the opposite of what I want. It's actually brightening the sky and leaving the buildings dark. I don't want to do that. I want to do the opposite. So we're going to leave that to the right. We're going to go to the slider on the left, and I'll move that to the right. And you can see how the buildings are getting lighter, and the sky is just getting minimal, minimally lighter as I move it just maybe past halfway. Now what the smoothness slider does, it just makes it either a real abrupt transition or a softer transition. If I move it to the left, you can see it's more of an abrupt transition. And if I move it to the right, it's a more subtle, softer transition. So somewhere you try to find a happy medium, let's say. So we'll keep brightening up the buildings. And we have our dark sky. Now I'm going to turn the entire graduated filter off by turning, hitting this little on-off switch there. So there's before. And there's after. So you see it did a pretty good job of darkening the sky and not applying the effect that much to the buildings. So that is the luminance range mask that is now in Lightroom Classic CC. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. We're going to cover those two new features because those are the most um, important new features that I think you might use in this new product. Again, in future videos, I'll go into some of the other uh, changes under the hood of this new Lightroom. We're using a new process engine. It's now called version 4. 
and we'll talk about that in future videos and some of the other changes in Lightroom Classic CC that was formerly called Lightroom CC and in a whole different video series we'll cover Lightroom CC which I prefer to call Lightroom in the cloud and that's just me calling it that that's nothing from Adobe so I'll cover that in a future one and we'll do another video series a third video series we'll cover in the future on Lightroom mobile so that's it for this video thank you everyone that watches my videos I truly do appreciate it I'll talk to you guys soon